So come and join me in the studio. I know you're going to absolutely love this. Sunday. <laughs> now I'm pretty excited about today because we're going to get messy. I know you find that really hard to believe. Now I've been on a bit of a frenzy creating these beautiful circle shapes, love it, and um, using this beautiful script stencil and I've had quite a few questions so I'm like well let's just make us some. So what I have used for this is this fabulous script writing stencil. It's designed by Julie Belzia. I think you pronounce it, Belzia Designs. Um, dot com. I'll put the info in the description. It's fabulous. It's called Messy Writing, which it is, right? Which so suits me. I love it. I bought it from Jackie's um, art shop. Jackie's Craft Shop in New Zealand. If you're in New Zealand, Jackie's Craft Shop, will she'll set you right. Um, otherwise, I have seen it on the Crafters Workshop if you're in the US. If you're in the UK, yeah, I don't know, man. You just have to Google it because right? <laughs> there's an abundance of other countries watching. So I don't know. But that's what I'm using. Um, Julie Belzia messy writing i love it right now it's just working for me and i thought we'll use that create some prints and some beautiful papers and then take some circle shapes and it'll be really fun um this is also here's some more of me using the script and playing with it now you have to experiment you have to try different ideas. You have to allow yourself to be wrong, make mistakes, stuff up. But it really doesn't matter because you're making beautiful papers that you're going to use in collage or for some other project. Look at that one. Fabulous. So depending on what you're printing or painting onto, the script letters will be that color. Just remember that. So you might want it lighter or you might want it darker. So this here, the background is darker than the paint I put on top. And so it comes through like that. That looks fabulous. I love it. And I also love it really textured. Um, I love a lot of texture. So I'm going to do that and show you how to do it really textured, really thick. Because baby, I love fat art. Let me tell you, I, I just do. I love it extravagant and I love too much and that's just how I am as a person so that's how the art tends to be see now with this one I've put black and it's got texture paste in it because I can feel it um, so I've painted the stencil on cardstock first and then when that was dry I printed it on the gel plate with the circle so we're gonna do that because that's just fun so I'm going to use cardstock. I have bought different packs of cardstock over time and they're not all brilliant. Some of them are, some of them aren't. I've used them in many collages, numerous art journal pages and other different projects. You can buy them relatively cheap from department stores in big pads like in the crafting section or the scrapbooking area or places where it sells lots of craft supplies, you'll find pads of cardstock. Fabulous, I love it, I print on it, I paint on it, I do all sorts of things, cut them up, use them all the time, they're fabulous. So I'm gonna show you how to create this one and we're gonna start with this particular piece of cardstock here. So the scripty, scribbly writing is masked out with this stencil so the writing will be what you're putting your paint onto so the writing is going to be this color just remember that and i'm loving that idea so i've got some black liquitex basics i'm using i'm also going to put it with some liquitex basics coarse texture medium because i want to just create fun texture very messy kind of style that I'm going to use in one of my art projects. 
so this is it the black and the coarse texture medium i'm just using that one because that's what i've got at the moment it really doesn't matter and then oh, i hear it oh, that's so crunchy <laughs> that's just like grinding your teeth with sand at the beat oh man that's awesome so i'm putting it on really messy don't get all like you know fussy about it and i'm trying not to get it all over my workspace so i don't want to actually run it over the edge but i love the texture of it i love the movement of this script pattern i think it's absolutely fabulous at the moment i'm loving it in the um, collages that i'm making so you know if something's working and you're loving it just do it just do it <laughs> keep, keep yourself happy make art the best way right so look at that that's fabulous that is the texture paste with black oh man that's fantastic okay so that's that you ready da -da. Da -da. look at that it's flipping beautiful yes it is that is fabulous i love it i'm gonna make some more okay so i washed my stencil enough <laughs> after i did another couple of friends with the black and now i'm going to do some white onto this one it's all the same card stock and i'm going to put some heavy gel gloss in with the white paint just to make it that bit thicker because it's fun uh, basically that's the reason it's fun like i said i like fat art and i'm going to do the same thing i'm putting it on with a palette knife because it's beautiful and thick i want my paper and my print to be heavily textured because i'm just loving that today and i know that i'll use it in something in the future and you'll probably even see me do that so you know we're just making papers for future collage in a different application and that is fun now if you scrape it over you get a different look than if you leave it really thick which is cool too i like it i like all of it actually and because it's messy writing we don't have to be you know precise or too precious about it which is really enjoyable especially for a sunday afternoon you can't get too precise or too precious about your art making right ho look at that beautiful little solid gel with the white and ta-da look at that i just love it i love that you've got this little sparkle of the bronze or copper dots that was on the cardstock i love the dark script coming through the white so if you were to take sections of this and put into a collage, it would look absolutely fabulous. I'm going to um, paint a couple more pieces on cardstock. And then I will have some in my Yay! Paper Stash storage. That is fabulous. I'm loving this. Now, of course, you don't have to use cardstock if you don't have any. You can recycle one of your jelly prints. This is a jelly print, I think, something. It's a bit of a mess, actually. I think it's printed on tissue by the look of that. And I don't know what I was thinking. Maybe I was using it as a cleanup. That's quite possible. Clean up piece of paper. So that's obviously not great and needs something else so i'm going to put the beautiful white over the top of this piece so think about recycling some of your jelly prints that you didn't think you know turned out as successful as you kind of had hoped or envisioned and the beauty of this particular stencil is because it doesn't have a hard edge you can actually pick and choose where you want to put 
the marks. So if you don't want to go right to the edge or if you don't want to even use all of the script writing, um, that's really cool too. I like that. I like that it can have a nice free edge and maybe you don't even want to cover all of it exactly and the options are endless really i'm loving this one right now this is fabulous so that's just on a recycled jelly print which wasn't going anywhere on tissue paper which is fabulous because it works great for collage on the tissue loving that look at that so it had a dark patch there and then it had the bronze and that is kicking kicking goals with that one so think about recycling some of your jelly prints and have a rummage through your cupboard and see what you need to paint over that you can give uh, new life to because that baby that's so gonna work for a collage oh my gosh yes now I absolutely love paper packaging uh, it comes wrapped around the numerous and many things I purchase online uh, so much of it it's crazy and I like to use it for roll-off sheets for the jelly printing um, or something that I want to clean off my brayer on like this piece I also like using just basic boring craft paper on my table if I'm spraying or I'm doing something that I know is going to get really hectic and messy I'll pull out the craft paper so this is what you need for this kind of absolute fun is to pull out your roll-off sheets, your craft paper, your old and boring papers that just need a bit of life. Also, you can use standard copy paper. That'll work fine too. I just like to try and use up pieces of paper that otherwise would get thrown away. So this one is I pulled out, of course, Liquitex Basic Copper. I also put some of the heavy gel gloss in it just to give it a bit of body and make it light, nice and thick. So it's going to be really textured. You won't see how glamorous this copper color is until it dries. So literally, I know I'm rough, I'm slapping it on, I know, but it sure is fun. So this is right over a piece of paper packaging that I use to clean my brayer off. I know, serious, serious stuff. So, you know, you've got to rummage through your drawers there and pull out all the stuff that you stuffed in there thinking one day you might do something. Oh, look at that. Absolutely fabulous. And then we're going to cut some glorious circles and you'll be amazed at how fabulous your papers will be. Look, look at that, look at that. <laughs> it's so much fun. So this is paper packaging with a roll off section of the brayer. Look at that, even using half of just the brown and half of the black would be cool too. But those marks are cool. They're really great for putting little snippets into your collage. And then you put it into your box of papers that now you want to use instead of wanting to throw out. Yes. So we'll just leave that there. I'm going to just throw this on. Literally, this is just the craft paper. And that should come up pretty nice too. I like using this craft paper under my paper, especially when I'm spraying them. And I just put it in a pile, pull it out when I want to create new papers and start with a coloured background. It works fabulous, I'm telling you. It's just fabulous. But you could use any papers, seriously. Anything works. you just got to allow yourself to have fun, to experiment, and be willing to slap some paint around. Look at that. I love it. It's absolutely fabulous. Right, so while those other pages are drying on my studio floor, I'm going to show you how I've made this circle shape, which is exactly 
like I just did the papers, exactly like this paper on cardstock with white and a little texture paste or gel medium to make it nice and thick and the stencil pops. And that's the piece that I would have cut this circle out of. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. You'll know all my secrets. <laughs> You'll find my secret circle making tool. <laughs> um, this one too. I cut exactly the same circle shape out of this one as well. And I'm loving it right now. And I say right now because I'll probably be changed in a month's time and obsessed with something else. So right now, this is my obsession. And I'm going to show you my secret circle making tool. Okay, here's the big reveal. Here's my secret circle making tool. It's actually my mum's favourite cereal bowl. Did I know that it was her favourite bowl? No, I didn't. I just went into the kitchen and took a bowl out of the cupboard and brought it in and started drawing circles because it's the right size and shape and it's easy to handle. And then after a couple of days, she's like, where's my favourite breakfast bowl gone and i'm like well what favorite breakfast bowl <laughs> and she's like, i'm like that ugly one with the blue stripes how is that your favorite breakfast bowl but anyway clearly it was she was a little horrified when i said i took it to my studio because she thought i'd cover it in paint i haven't covered it in paint look there's no paint on it or in it but you take a pen and you draw around it and that is my secret circle making tool. I know, I know, right? That's pretty old school. There's nothing high tech about this one. So there's the print on that side and I've just turned it over and draw a circle. I know. I know. No paint in it. Thank you, mum. You can have it back. She actually works with me. She is my assistant. And, you know, I've got to keep her happy sometimes. So I can put that back into the kitchen. No drama. And there you go. So now what about the middle piece? Well, I'm glad you asked because I use this whole punchy thing. Fiskars. I think it's like a two inch hole punch would be my guess and it's pretty cool so i get uh cardstock fishies cardstock that i don't actually really think i'm going to use because i don't like the color of it and i'll punch a circle and it happens to be the perfect size for the middle bit so you know you do have to wing it a little is that in the middle is that really in the middle is <laughs> Is that, hang on while I stick my head in the way. <laughs> Is that perfectly in the middle? Well, it might be. It would be better if I put my glasses on. Seriously. And then I draw around the middle piece. Ta-da! And there's my awesome, thank you very much, um, perfect circle tool. <laughs> and then you get a pair of scissors and you cut it out. I know, I know, it's so old school. I actually wasn't gonna tell anybody because it's a little passe. I mean, this is pretty old school. This is drawing around a bowl and then drawing around the middle piece. I oh, know, but at least you know you can do this, right? You just hunt through your cupboard and find the right size bowl that you like and voila it's just like magic there we go look at that fabulous and then there's bits to use again there it is you could use it just like that i mean that's just beautiful in itself love that but if you want to cut the middle bit out then draw another hole and cut the middle piece out. I know, it's really not hard. And I was a little embarrassed to even show you because it's pretty darn basic. But it's effective, what can I say? It works. 
and you can do it <laughs> and you'll probably do it a lot better <laughs> so that's what I do if I just want to cut it straight out of the pages that I've painted or printed uh, you do have to be a little patient to get the start section exactly curved right but you know how patient I am and you can always use that piece as well of course everything gets recycled and ready ta -da, ta -da! there is a fabulous circle shape oh my gosh that is amazing <laughs> see look how good it would be stuck on a background just beautiful right now you know my secret circle making tool you'll be able to make hundreds now if you want to print on the gel plate because this one is the clearly the, the exact circle making tool um, and then what I've done is I've cut this as a template out of cardstock and put it on the gel plate and then taken a print which we're going to do of course because it would be wrong not to so basically you do this again I do it with cardstock that I don't particularly think I'll be using the color of. You always get some in your packs that you're like, meh, I don't like that one. So I'm very happy for that. I use the cardstock all the time to take, make templates for the gel print in all sorts of sizes, shapes, and designs. So, you know, there it is, my <laughs> secret, secret circle making tool. Ah, oh, now exposed. What can I say? And then the middle section, which I just punched out of there, where you've got to somehow, you know, you do have to eyeball it. And no one's really going to, no one's yet argued with me that my center wasn't exactly the most perfect circumference. So what do I care? And then you draw your center piece and you cut it out. I know. I won't make you watch this again. Don't worry. We'll fast forward this bit. So, ta-da! Just like magic. It's, <laughs> it's cut out. So, this cardstock, I then use as a template on the gel plate uh, to create these shapes here when I want to take a print. Absolutely fabulous. I just love it. I know. Basic as simple old school drawing around something i know what can i tell you i'll try and make it fancy but it's really not <laughs> in fact i was a little embarrassed to even tell you because it's so basic but uh, that's what i do and now let's take a couple of the gel prints with the other papers that i painted hopefully they're dry and Let's have a little play with our fabulous jelly plate. Right, so now that I have my fabulous templates, um, I'll show you the beautiful wonder of jelly printing, <laughs> which I know that you know and love. So I'm putting uh, one and a half on my plate because it's just fun, really. There's no other reason. And I'm going to put some... Liquitex Basics with the copper. So the template goes on first and then the paint and then I pull the print. No, and then I pull the templates off and then I pull the print. And it's just all a bit of fun. Now, sometimes it takes a bit when you're printing to get your groove on. So I always find it's really helpful to start by using scrap paper. Mm, I think I need my trusty palette knife. Pull them off. Now they are only cardstock, so they're not going to last forever. But they'll last long enough for me to have a little play and throw around some gel print. So this is just clearly a cleanup sheet of paper. It's rice paper. In my studio, I have papers in all sorts of stages of printing because I just love to keep printing on top until I create something amazing. And then I will use it for collage. So 
This is my template with my cleanup paper, rice paper, and there's the circles. Da -da, da -da. You see, that's how I did that one. <laughs> but of course, the background was different, and that's what really matters. But it is good to start with a cleanup sheet or some kind of paper that you're not going to worry if the print doesn't work because sometimes it just takes a bit to get your mojo um i might go you know straight to drama of course straight to the dramatic and i'm putting some black on the plate rolling over my beautiful circles this is just liquitex basics and my cardstock templates which will probably only last this printing session the way I go. I tend to be a little heavy handed with the paint. They might last longer for you. And I'm going to use again a background. Now, I find that I create all sorts of mark making on my papers at different stages. This is actually a piece of the, look at that, craft paper that I printed one of my beautiful script writing backgrounds on. See, I've used it again for just mark making and I will do that. I love it. I absolutely love jelly printing. I'll come in here at night time and just continuously jelly print because it's fabulous. So that's on that background. Look at that. It's so much fun. Now it depends on, of course, what background you choose to put it on as to how much impact the beautiful circles have. Now, because I just want to keep printing, I don't want to pull the ghost print because it's just ordinary and uninteresting. So I'm going to put my templates back on there and I'm going to put some, let's see what other backgrounds can I use? How about we go over that? That could be fun. All that could do with being a little dramatic too. So let's put a bit of, oops, let's put too much black on. That's a great flip and start that is. <laughs> and we'll put some copper on to lighten it up. Ah, you can't worry about things like that. Didn't quite mean to put that much on. But here we go. So a bit of copper, can't see it too much. Let's put a bit more copper on just wanted it to have a little bit of metallic through it. Take some paint off with the roll off sheet, which hello, you know I use the roll off sheets. So don't forget you wanna do that. There we go, we'll pull the templates off again. So I'm quite happy to beat up these circles in one printing session. As you could see, they really weren't very hard to make. And because I do tend to saturate them with paint, they will only last a couple of printing sessions, but by the time they're destroyed, I'll probably be doing something else anyway. Righto, let's see what we have. Oh yeah, little moony, little dramatic. You can see how the copper kind of picks up the edge there of the um, other shapes that was already on the paper that's really fun you could actually accentuate that some more put a little rubbing of paint over it um that would look really really cool I'm liking that righto so there's just oh a couple more i'd like to just try the ones i printed before are still wet because it's humid here today in beautiful new zealand I might put some, still feel in the black. Okay, maybe try not to put so much on this time. And then perhaps a bit of the deep matter. This is just the Reeves paint, very inexpensive. What's with the deep somber colors? I don't know, man. That's just how I'm feeling it. <laughs> What can I say? So I'm going to try a really 
beautifully textured background and show you how awesome these circles can look. So if you're getting a bit smudgy, like see how my circles are blown out, that's because of pulling them up or it's because there's too much paint. You can just give them a wipe with the baby wipe and you know, beautiful. So I'm trying this background. This was actually a print that I took from a bath mat that I bought at the dollar shop. Yes, I admit it. It's a plastic, nasty plastic bath mat as if you would use it, but it takes a fabulous gel print. <laughs> so I was playing around with some mark making and it was just so much fun. So now I'm putting my circle shapes on the print and let's see how glorious that'll look. Oh yes, how much fun is that? So I could use that page in something. I can cut out the circle shapes and use them separately or I could just use the whole piece. There's so many options. It's absolutely fantastic and such a simple way to create fabulous designs and prints on your gel plate. So all you need is the secret tool of your mum's favourite cereal bowl <laughs> and you'll be fine. I wonder if there's enough. I'm going to try this background with the ghost print because there might be enough paint still wet on the plate to take that. You could also wait for that ghost print to dry and then roll another color over it and pull the print that way. And then the circles will be whatever paint you roll over, which you could then print straight onto paper, copy paper or rice paper or my favorite white tissue. So, you know, people, options are endless. That's why we love jelly printing. Let's see if we pulled up the ghost print. See, look at that. That is just fun. So that's got the print there. So that was printed onto this paper and that paper has left the ghost print of those patterns on there and that's just fun i love that colors are beautiful i love the textures and it's just the experimentation of the process that i particularly enjoy the most okay so this one has dried finally yippee and that's how i started with this one and i just want to show you the process same process using the beautiful templates that I made with cardstock. Ta-da! Beautiful. Absolutely love it. I love the design. I love the layers of the paint. I absolutely love this script writing. I think it's fabulous. It makes beautiful elements for collage and fabulous papers to work with. I just love it. <laughs> so now you know how to create my perfect circle shape. Let's make a collage once I decide which of all these amazing papers I'm going to use. Right, so all my prints have dried, which is fabulous. Look how gorgeous this one is with the copper. I just love it. It's so glamorous. That's the copper color of the Liquitex Basics. 
that I put straight onto a um, packaging roll-off sheet. My gosh, unbelievable, with the stencil. Uh, I would definitely use sections of this in collage. I absolutely love it. And did I mention free resources, packaging, hello, you're rolling off your brayer, so... You know, you want to keep all those papers that you use to create beautiful prints with. Look at that one, the same. It's a Brea roll-off sheet on packaging and the copper looks fabulous. Absolutely love it. Um, this one was the recycled jelly print that had gone nowhere. Look at it now. I would just rip that off and start a collage based on just that section. I love this messy writing stencil script in um, of itself or especially cut into the circles look at that circle i love it so much it came straight out of that sheet i showed you my secret tool for making the perfect circle <laughs> so that's that um these ones worked beautiful look how well that dried up so depending on what you're printing your circle shape onto it's going to create that glorious pattern i love it that was the print that was the ghost print just as gorgeous i mean it just goes on and on look at these fabulous prints i know why make one when you can make 20 i say uh, these pages turned out beautiful look at that it's got a little um copper circle fleck in it you can put this stencil over so many things and create amazing papers just make sure you allow yourself to experiment and have fun so now i'm going to create a collage in my art journal my problem is what am i going to use which one will i start with i'm either going to start with the black circle and create a collage or the white one which one? Which one? <laughs> black or white? It's black. It's white. <laughs> Man, I don't know. Which one will we use? We're either going to use the white version or we're going to use that and some of that. I love that too on the black. Decisions, decisions. Black or white? Black or white? It's black. It's white. I don't know, man. <laughs> Right, so I finally decided on this black one because um, I absolutely love it. I fell in love with it. That was why I wanted to show you how to make this incredible texture and pattern with the stencil and the circle. So I think I'll do a collage with this one. And I have already previously done a one with the white circle. So, you know, I'm going to begin with this one and I'm definitely going to use another piece, probably this one, because I just love that. I think I'll start this section with some of this. Yeah, I think I will. Now I'm going to tear from this side because I want less white to show. And my theory is that when you tear it on the other side, you'll have less white showing. So the white should be more on this side, right? Because I've torn it from that side. Ta-da! There's less white showing on that side. I know, right? <laughs> it's amazing, amazing. So anyway, I'm going to put that piece there because I love, love, love this section. I'm not sure if I'm going to keep it right to the end, but I'm going to start with that. That's a great start. I've pulled out some of my beautiful gel prints. Um, I do full-on mark-making printing sessions in my studio, lots of the times at night time, and I just do a whole heap of prints at once because I love having copious amounts to choose from when I want to put a collage together. So I've got all of these beautiful background prints. Um, I was playing with some mark-making. That's actually the lid of my spot spray ink bottle i know it's so high tech my techniques are so high tech <laughs> and this is my brush on the plate my lid of my spray bottles and then i'm flicking my brush around playing with some you know lines going this way and that way you know kind of like what this script looks like on this messy writing which i love so that might work. That could be good. Um, I like this one as well because it's got the bronze underneath coming through. These beautiful gel prints are mono prints, right? I could never reproduce them in a fit. 
and see how they're all kind of in a similar color tone that's how i know i did them all at once because i get into a creative frenzy and i do a whole heap and they come out in similar tones and values and colors um, and then i put them away in a folder and then i move on to the next night that i could be in a completely different frame of mind wanting totally different colors so the beauty of that is make a whole heap when you're in one space or one color palette because then you've got some to use when you want them for your collage this one's really nice too i was probably playing with some ink on the gel plate flicking it around with the brush seeing what it did how it printed the mark making is always very experimental but you have to allow yourself to do that this one is just all the brush so the gel plate, bronze clearly, and then just the brush, putting marks, and then pulling the print. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy, but it does make fabulous um, elements to then use in collage when I'm wanting to put something together. So they're kind of all around me, and I'll decide as I go which ones I actually want to use. And we're going to start with these ones. So I'm going to use this piece. I think I'm going to both tear it and cut it, which I like to do. I'm going to tear a section from here, cut round the circle there, and then tear this section, only because, you know, it's fun. It's going to sit at the top here, so I'll probably cut that section, and I might cut that so that it sits there on the edge, although that's probably the full length of my page, so maybe I won't cut that. So I'll start with that. Now I have my matte medium, which I like to use for my collage. That's just personal. I like brushing things on. I have my um, old plastic card if I want to flatten something. My trusty, beautiful water brush pen. It has water in it from the dollar shop. Hello. This thing is fabulous for tearing out sections of the gel prints, especially when they're on tissue. If you put the water around it and tear it, it works magnificent, magnificent. And we've got some scissors and we're ready to roll. I like the um, idea of tearing a section and then cutting it. It's just fun. It just creates different uh, shapes and different edges. But I think I'm gonna have to decide what I'm gonna put down here first. And I might put a little bit of bronze along that edge there because, you know, tore it the wrong side and we've got the white strip, don't want that. So which of the backgrounds do I wanna put down? And I'm gonna glue that onto there and put a background down on this page as well just gonna have to decide which of these beautiful background prints do I want to use. just using a piece of junk mail to put more of the matte medium on this piece because it's a um, thicker piece of cardstock so I want to make sure it's got a good covering and I don't want to put matte medium all over my working space so I use a junk mail um, brochure to put the matte medium on and voila your working space stays nice and clean which I love. Right, we're right on the edge there. Whoops, I overshot the runway a little bit on that edge there. Ah, oh, no. oh no, oh man. So I'm going to pinch 
a piece of the off cut <laughs> from that section just to stick it under that bit because uh, it's a tiny gap there and we'll just stick it under here you see you can't worry about these kinds of things you can fix it just like that Ta -da! magic so when that dries i'll trim that edge and that'll be just fine don't worry about if you overshoot the runway and you cut things too short it'll be fine just stick another piece in it this is the beauty of collage you can fix anything oh man i'm already loving it look this is painting with paper so i do sessions of mark making in my studio and i create all of these beautiful backgrounds with different tools and techniques actually i just get into a really creative frenzy <laughs> and print a heap of stuff which works really well when you're looking for background pieces and i'm already loving this page just with these two things just like that i'm already loving it so this side i'm going to put this background there that's going on there and then i need to find Ooh, another piece for that i think i'll leave that piece going right down to the edge of the page i'm loving it i'll trim it off i think i'll trim it off after i stick it on since you know <laughs> my estimation of length wasn't so great this side i am um, i'll trim it off after i've glued it on and i think maybe shall i tear some of that to put along the bottom or one of the other ones mm, i'll have to decide on that because i've got to put a piece along here before i put this on top okay absolutely love the marks and textures and colors in this piece it's just beautiful and so unique i'd never be able to print that again in a fit because you're in such a particular mode and you're using particular colors at that time of printing and you know you're in that moment all of these beautiful jelly prints are a moment that you've chosen to create and you know they're incredibly unique and they make for such beautiful artworks. absolutely fabulous i love it look at that get it right on the edge there and that looks just beautiful absolutely fabulous i love it now what's next we're not going to need very much really these papers are beautiful in themselves, so I'm not going to want to put on too much more. I just might have a look in my scrap bag 
and see what little piece of something I could possibly add. But it's really not going to take very much. Okay, so I pulled out my scrap bag and what do I want? Oh, there's a piece of Nat Geo paper. That's pretty nice. That could go somewhere. What else we got in here? Oh, that's that's a bit of the other. Same scripting. Oh, the white's nice on there. What do we think about the white? Hmm. Do we want any more circles? I don't know. Do we want more circles? Are we sick of circles? We might be sick of circles. Nah. <laughs> Never sick of circles. That's a pretty nice piece. Oh, man. Now I've got to decide what I want. Love scrap bags. Ooh, that's pretty nice. That's actually obviously printed at the same time because it's got similar colors. Pretty nice, pretty nice. There's some other things in here that would work. That's pretty cool piece. Oh, yes, it is fabulous. Oh, some of my beautiful wallpaper circles. You know, now I just have to decide. Oh, there's a <laughs> Are there some fabulous paper that we know and love? <laughs> you know, that would work. Oh, that would always work. Mm, be tempted, be tempted. Oh, here's some more of that off cut. That's pretty nice too. Man, now I just have to decide. What? Oh, what about some beehive paper? Oh, yeah, that could be cool down there. Oh, I like that idea. I like that idea. I do like the Nat Geo paper. But mm, there's the white one. Righto, righto. Stop pulling stuff out. You're just going to confuse yourself. <laughs> Let's work with something that's on there. Righto, so I had to get everything off my page because I was confusing myself with the options. That's nice too. <laughs> Sometimes if you've got too many options, it's actually harder than not having enough. But I did leave the beehive paper on here i'm liking the beehive paper that does dissolve so you're only going to see the actual circle bits which i think would look really cool because that page is beautiful and just needs something simple to finish it um this i pulled this out this is just an ink line on very cheap it's called newspaper print it was a pad like that for five dollars from the cheap shop i just thought i'd experiment with some mark making on the paper because then you don't get precious about it if it's just really cheap which is awesome so it looks like a sound wave i really like it but is it too big is it too much mm, shall i trim it down a bit more i'm liking the line of it does feel like a sound wave so i'm liking i like it i just think maybe it's bit, maybe it's too big and then it needs something else splashed on it. So, you know, it's how it goes. You just got to try different things. But if you put all your little bits and pieces into a scrap bag after each collage, which is what I do, then you get to pull out cool bits for the next one. That way or that way? I'm liking this. I'm liking this too. I don't really want to cover it too much. But I like that. That's kind of cool. Definitely looks like a sound wave. And then I'm like, hmm... Maybe I'll pull one of these marks off this page. This was just really freely creating uh, marks on the page with some ink on the gel plate. I, I think that's what I was doing. So I might rip a section out of this beautiful copper. It's probably, it probably looks like copper color with this particular mark on it and see if I can put that on see what that looks like I love just spending time creating marks and printing on the gel plate oh my gosh it's like my most favorite thing to do in fact my next Skillshare class that's what I'm going to do expressive mark making and I'm just going to spend days creating these beautiful papers for backgrounds and collages Yes, that's what I'm doing. See, look at that. That's pretty cool. That could go like that. 
maybe less. Yeah, I know. Too big. Too big. <laughs> too big, too much. <laughs> Come on, tell me. <laughs> Righto. Do we like this idea? I like this idea. It's just a matter of getting the shape right. Oh, I like it there. What about like that? That's kind of cool. Yeah, we'll think about that. I'll think about that why I put this on. Because I'm convinced on this. I'm not so convinced on that. Oh, I like that paper too. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll try some of that. That kind of looks cool. This paper is called Beehive, just so you know. Um, yes, I do know what it's called, which is always good. And it is amazing. It dissolves really well in the center here. And then you have this beautiful fibrous circle. I bought this paper from the Takapuna Art Supplies here in beautiful New Zealand. But you could probably get it from Amazon or an art shop in whatever country you are. And it is beautiful if you do get some, buy it. Just buy it. Because look at that. I love this. I love the way it goes transparent. You can still see that line and those circles underneath. Love that. I love that it's making this free circle shape. And it looks really cool. And then if, you know, if the shape wasn't exactly what you wanted, you just rip it like that. Oh my gosh, I just love this paper. Beautiful. It'll dry even more transparent. And I think that finishes that side. It's glorious. It's got a lovely feel about it. It's got the beautiful free script with the messy writing stencil, the colors are glorious, and that is just beautiful. This one, I'm not convinced. So I have to play around with something else. Okay, so maybe, maybe some of that on there. You know, that could actually work. Look at the layers, loving the layers. All right, let's try that. Mm, maybe I'll tear it. So that's obviously the printing session and the same time as this background because it's got similar colors. This is the lid of my spray inks, I'm pretty sure, because I was messing around with that. Gotta love me some mark making. So I'm liking this idea. I wonder if we could get a really kind of, yeah, let's get a really kind of raw edge on here and then we could put a little touch of the bronze on it yes loving that idea okay so that's it there i'm gonna put it there does it need bronze around it i like that do i like that maybe i need to trim that off I like this little layered thing, the layered elements. Look at that. Yeah, that's cool. And that's got then the same similar circle shape as what's happening there, but it's different. Same, same, but different. Like it. Do I want to edge it in the bronze or do I want to leave it white? You know, I think I might, oh, that edge is there. You know, I think I actually might leave it white because it kind of makes it stand out more, doesn't it? And the white then is over here as well. Yeah, I'm leaving it white. I'm glad you said that. Because <laughs> it matches better the other side and it stands out more. And I'm thinking I can live with this. I'm, yeah, right, we're doing it. We're doing it, okay. <laughs> this is what we're doing. <laughs> oh man, I love it. I love putting these intuitive collages together. I absolutely just love the creative process, the shapes and the colors and just the way it feels. I love abstract. Oh, my gosh. Abstract's actually my favorite. Yes, it is. Need to trim that side once it's dried. And... 
and it should dry up really nice. So don't disregard your cheap nothing papers that you find in the like dollar stores or the cheap shops because you can experiment on them and do all sorts of mark making and then you're not scared about, you know, wasting your precious papers or spending a fortune. And then you can use them in a beautiful collage that makes you happy. Right, so now we'll put the fabulous sketchy bit. That's the edge there. Make it somewhat centered. See, it's the same. Um, it's not the same paper as the background, but it was printed at the same time. So it's got the same colors and feel. So that works really well. And then I'll put the beautiful little circle elements on top like that. Ah, oh, love it. That looks fabulous. Looking fabulous. Okay, I'll show you when it's dried because at the moment it's just all like plastered with gel medium. We'll come back when it's dried and I'll show you how beautiful these papers look. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so I couldn't leave it five minutes without coming up with another idea. I thought maybe why don't I put white on these bits because it would bring that white across here. It would connect it more and it would give it some pop. I think that'd be cool. So I've got some white in a golden fluid. And this is my trusty spray bottle lid. I know, right? I know. Seriously, I know you've learned some really advanced techniques today <laughs> with my really super amazing tools. So I'm thinking, ta-da! Yeah, I like that. Yeah, that looks cool. That looks cool. It's okay. Don't panic. It's going to work. <laughs> work. Ta-da! I like the I like the flip too. That's cool. All right, one more. <laughs> that looks cool. I like that. That was a good idea. Yay, team! Ah, uh, spray bottle lid. That's what that is. Mark making. I love what mark making. Seriously, you need to join me on Skillshare. That is fabulous. I love it. Looks great. Finished it off nicely. Yes, I'm going to leave it alone now to dry. Then I'm going to trim the side. And then I'm going to show you how fabulous it's dried up. Yay! Much happier with that plan. Right, well, my page is dry enough for me to cut the edge. It looks fabulous. Trimmed it all around. Um, look how beautiful the beehive paper comes up. What I love is the way the middle bit becomes so transparent that you can see all those beautiful colors and textures underneath. Yet there's this beautiful thick edge of the circle in the glorious paper. Beehive, that's all I'm saying. <laughs> I'm loving my script stencil there. The beautiful messy writing on cardstock, fabulous. Loving my background jelly prints, loving my mark making. Oh my gosh, love mark making. Absolutely fabulous there. This is glorious. Now you know my secret circle making tool. <laughs> I love it. This background is beautiful. This textured paper is great. I love the way this line behind there comes across. And it's the same tones and colors as the background paper. Works fabulous. And... I'm really happy with my last minute idea to put the circles in white on there. I think it's fresh, it pops, it also connects this side together and I'm loving this. I'm just loving it. I really enjoyed putting it together. I hope you enjoyed watching it um, with me and journeying on this creative process. As you can see, sometimes the decisions are a little tough. It could go this way, it could go this way. You could create these collages 10 different ways with the same kind of papers. So, you know, there isn't kind of any wrong answer. There's just what you want to create on the day you're creating it, how it makes you feel, the colors you want to use and the shapes. 
So I really hope this has inspired you with your art making because really that's the point, people. I want to inspire you to create great art. So join me again next time. Don't forget to check out my new Skillshare class. It's going to be awesome. I'm doing expressive mark making. Yes, can't wait. It's going to be so much fun. And see you next time in the studio. So if you like this video, show me the love, thumbs up, give me some likes, subscribe to the channel, leave me a comment, you know the drill, and I'll see you again next time. Yeah.